Uh, happy Memorial Weekend. It's great to see everyone. Um, we do certainly give thanks to all of those who died in service to our country, and of course to those who are currently serving in military as well. A reminder that uh, next week after church, um, well actually at church, it's the last day of Sunday school. So the youth will be planting some flowers during the Sunday school time, and then after we're having make your own Sundays on a Sunday. I know, ice cream after church is good, and a bounce house. That was really more for the little kids, but. And we make sure that they have their ice cream after the bounce house. Um, but please come. Um, if you're able to donate anything, we appreciate any types of ice cream or um, dairy-free ice cream or toppings or whatever. If you can donate to the cause, that would be great. Um, you can do so this week, Monday through Thursday, 9 to 3. Or just give me a call and let me know if you're going to bring something. And if not, just come and have ice cream that day because it'll be fun. Bring a friend. Um, are there any other announcements for the good of the cause? Oh, Ron. Morning, everybody. Uh, just a reminder that I know we're coming into the summer season, uh, but we still need volunteers to handle our Sunday church service all through the summer and into the end of the year. So Joy has kindly made it easy for us. Uh, I know some of you don't like to go to the website, but there's some sign-up sheets outside here in the gathering area for acolytes, for ushers, for communion care, readers, and assistant minister. So if you can find a Sunday sometime in the summer to sign up for one of those volunteer duties, that would really be appreciated. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Ron. Um, also, I wanted to mention, excuse me, allergies in my throat. <clears> throat> um, I wanted to mention that we're still using Bibles for our readings and we'll be doing so throughout summertime. Um, and of course, we have a bunch in the back if you need one. Um, but we're just trying to kind of get ourselves back into the habit of picking up our Bible on occasion, which it should be every day, but on occasion, um, and kind of getting ourselves familiar with that again. So if anyone does not have a Bible right now that needs one, please let us know with a show of hand, and we'll make sure you have one, and we can have you mark your Bibles. Um, Steve, can you give me... Well, we'll do the, we'll, we'll share the piece first and then we'll turn to the pages. Um, May I? What's that? I oh, you have just, an announcement? I do. I was just um, going to ask if anyone like to would like to provide special music for, uh, throughout the summer. I'll put up a sign-up sheet out in the uh, gathering area and we'd love to have our youth. We would love to have anyone who'd um, like to share with us a poem reading is okay too. Oh, that's cool. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other announcements? I don't see any hands going up. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Please share that peace with one another. Well, a little slight change of plans. So while you're still standing, we're going to have everyone um, sing the gathering hymn, and we'll take it from there. So if you can click one more. There we go. Thank you.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. And I'm not seeing any youth today for a youth message. So I guess that means, Corky, you're up, please, if you would do the honors of reading for us. Good morning. The Old Testament reading for this morning comes from the 10th chapter of Deuteronomy. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the foreigner residing among you, giving them food and clothing. And you are to love those who are foreigners, for you yourselves were foreigners in Egypt. Fear the Lord your God and serve him. Hold fast to him and take your oaths in his name. He is the one you praise. He is your God who performed for you those great and awesome wonders you saw with your own eyes. We'll read the Psalms responsively. Let us burst their bonds asunder and cast their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord has them in derision. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Psalm 2. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, saying, Let us birth their bonds asunder and cast their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord has them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and trembling. Kiss his feet, or he will be angry, and you will perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are all who take refuge in him. The New Testament reading for this morning is from Galatians chapter 5. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbors as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. 
So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immort immortality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. This ends the readings for this morning. The Gospel of the Lord. If there are any parts of this song that you know, um, please feel free to sing along. <clears throat> you have everything in your hands. You have everything under
I invite you to please stand as you are able or as you choose for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to the third chapter of St. John beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God, which is born of the flesh, is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. <clears throat> Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born anew. The wind blows where it wills, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know whence it comes or whither it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can this be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand this? Very truly I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven, but he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent the Son into the world not con to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to please be seated. Those of you who know me even just a little bit, which is pretty much most of you, I think, know that sometimes I have a bit of an imagination. Is that a fair statement? Just a little. One of the things that we used to do as kids was we would actually make up games and play outside. No TV, no game things, no nothing. We made up our own games. And I got to tell you, in our neighborhood, it was pretty awesome. We decided one day that it would be really fun to take our windbreakers that we had, you know, those zippy-uppy kind with the hoods and whatever, we decided it would be fun to take our jackets like that and make them into capes like superheroes. Because if you unzip them and you're wearing it and you hold the sides out, it's like a cape. And you start out jumping on the small step closest to the concrete off the porch. <laughs> Easy, because you've got to train to be a superhero. And then the second step and the third and the fourth. And the next thing you know, we're on the ledge of the porch the outside of the handrail. Okay, ready? <sighs> and we would jump, and of course, we didn't fly, <laughs> which was the huge disappointment of the whole gig. And we thought, well, maybe if we, we blow up our jackets a little bit more with more air and the sleeves and things, I'm, I'm like six or seven, so bear with me, people, probably eight. Maybe 10. Anyway, so we thought if we could blow up the sleeves with air and somehow curve our arms more, we could get more air to fly longer and further in the yard. And I can only imagine what the neighbors, who were all older folks, their kids had moved on, who I knew, I can't imagine they were all probably watching us kids out there trying to figure this out. Well, we never figured out how to fly, but we tried. And it kind of came to a stop when we moved over to the neighbor's house who had an uh, upstairs apartment that you could access from the backyard. Well, to do that, you had to go up the steps that went to the second floor outside. Which means it's higher up, so when you jump, you get more air. <laughs> Except your mom catches it when you're on step six. And you get in trouble. 
but it was fun till it wasn't. Why am I talking about that? Wind, air was both involved in those things. Wind and air and breath, as us kids talked about this plan that we're going to come up with to learn how to fly. Oh, we had it all planned out. We were going to fly around the neighborhood, get groceries for our moms, and take them in so we didn't have, we had a big plan. We were trying to control the wind, talking about it using our voices, controlling it with our jackets. And then mom took the ultimate power of the wind by yelling at us. Yo, kids, get off of there. Sorry. What are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> you all know you've done it, right? The nothing. The wind is something that we feel, something we cannot see. Oh, you could say a tornado, but really what you're seeing is dirt and debris and things that are caught up in the tornado, but you're not really seeing the wind. We can see the effects of the wind as it blows the trees. We can feel it blow our hair around or on our skin or our face. And oh gosh, when it blows on a hot summer's day, giving us some relief from the heat, that wind is pretty special. There's a story in one of the um, bestseller books, Reader's Digest, love those, um, titled The Courtship of Peggy McCoy, and the article deals with wind. Peggy's a retired Navy nurse and lives on the coast of Maine. Her hobby, her obsession really, is sailing. You all know what that is, right? Are you getting a boat and the wind pushes you around? It's great. Each day, Peggy takes her sailboat out for a sail, she loves it. She learns how to read the wind to gauge where it's going to go so that she can use that sail in the boat so that it catches the wind just right. And to read about her sailing experiences, one could almost feel the wind coming out of the pages of the book as she sometimes fought with her boat, as she allowed it to, the, or fought with the wind, and she allowed it to catch her sails and take her out onto the water. That wind, that Holy Spirit that we don't give much thought to. Growing up, some of you might know that my dad had a small sailboat. It was a butterfly style sailboat, and it was an aqua blue top, and my dad, for some reason, decided to paint it, the bottom of it orange. So it was kind of like a dolphin's, Miami Dolphins color scheme on this boat. And it made it easy for us when we were on the shore to see when he dumped it because the orange would go flip side up. He didn't like those days too much, you see, because, well, Dad wasn't doing so great if his boat tipped over and he caught the wind wrong. One day, he was going to take me out for a ride in the boat up at the Titabawassee River. So at my grandparents' place up there, there was a dock, and he had the boat tied to the dock, and whatever, okay, Darcy, get in the, in the, the boat. I forgot something in the house, so he ran up to the house to get something. Well, while he's in the house getting his thing, mind you, I'm like 11, sitting in this boat by myself, every time the wind would blow, the sail is connected to something called a boom that moves back and forth. Well, when you're sitting in this tiny boat and you got this thing coming, it's going to hit you in the head, hence the name. Well, I'm in the boat doing these because I'm ducking under this sail because the wind's got it going back and forth. Well, then I get scared. Because the wind's picking up, and it's going faster. I'm getting tired of ducking. Dad's still in the house. He kind of had a short trigger for, yeah. Anyway, don't want to make Dad mad. So I decide to help out by holding the boat and taking the rope that's connected to the boom. Next to the dock in the river in Gladwell. So guess what happened next time the wind came? And I'm still hanging on, only now... We're sideways. <laughs> and I'm little, and Dad's still in the house, and I'm sideways with his prized boat next to the dock. That now the sail is banging into the edge of the dock, which is wood, and I'm afraid it's going to rip the sail, and I'm afraid I'm going to end up under the dock and stuck and have a wedgie, and we're going to have to get a dozer to pull it out, and Dad's going to be mad. Well, Dad didn't get mad, but I never saw him run so fast in my whole life because I'm yelling out, somebody come, somebody come. I'm in this boat holding on sideways. 
I see my dad come out of the house, and it was built in a hill. He comes running down the hill, and it's concrete steps that you can only get like a half of a stride, and then you got to hit the next one. So he's trying to like get down these um, sideways. <laughs> Darcy, let go of the rope. Let go of the rope. I can't. I'm scared. Let go of the rope. <laughs> I didn't get wet. And the boat didn't get hurt, and I ended up going for a ride until we got stuck on a power line (laughs) across the the river. (laughs) Where am I going with this, you're probably wondering. Wind. Sometimes you can try and control what God does. And you might think it worked out to your advantage that, oh, God's in my team today. Thanks, God. Here's the problem, dear God, I'm going to pray. Here's the problem. Here's the solution. Amen. Guilty? I really need you, God, to hear me because this is what I need you to do because it's really bad and -and so-and-so is sick and -and so-and-so and this is how, and here's how the thing will work out and it'll be great. Amen. And God's going, really? You think so? It's a lot of wind coming out of your face, and I'm glad you're talking to me, but it's really up to me as a God. I'm not God. God is God. I'm using that example. As God to kind of direct things with the Holy Spirit in the way that you need to go. Think about 10 years ago in your life, if you're old enough to do that, or go back a portion of your life. Think about how things have played out in the last six months. Did it go the way you thought it would? Did God give you some surprises along the way? I hope so. Were we paying attention for those surprises, or did we just get mad because the way that we prayed for things to work out didn't turn out, so now we're mad at God because God never listens to me? I got some really good advice from a friend when I was in my early 20s. I was telling her all the things in life that hadn't been going well. Here's what needs to happen. I want this, 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 and this, and this. And she very calmly put down her book, and she looked at me, and she said, be very careful what you pray for, because you just might get it. The wind blows where it blows. The Holy Spirit moving in and around and through us and among us. The wind blows where it wills. You hear the sound of it, but you do not know whence it comes or whither it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now, on one hand, that can sound really scary because we're not in control. We like to be in control. We get to be in control so much that you hit one button to call a person on your phone. You have the power to do the self-checkout at the grocery store. You have the power to pump your own gas. You can even order your groceries online and somebody will bring them to your house. You have lots of power with that remote. You can change the channel as many times as you want on your TV because you have the power. And it feels good. We like to know what's going to happen. And life doesn't work that way. Holy Spirit's moving through and around us and full of all kinds of surprises that we never thought of. See the Bibles up here? Last week we gave a whole bunch away to kids. And after church I had people coming to me asking, hey, I know a so-and-so somebody, can I give one to them if I donate? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why would I say no to giving someone a Bible? Yesterday, we had a baptism at church, and there was a little boy who was about four, three or four years old, really cute. And I asked him, do you have a Bible? Well, I have one at home. I said, do you want a new Bible? Yes. So I walked up, got one of those little frolic first Bibles of preschool age, and took it to him, and that little boy, you would have thought he won the lottery. He was so excited for it. Last week after the, the um, potluck, there were kids that didn't want to go home because they're sitting at tables with their Bibles out flat and they're totally dived in. And they said to their parents, we can't go yet because I'm not done reading my story. 
Holy Spirit working and moving. It's good stuff. Yeah, it can be scary to, to let that power be to God, but it can also be really exciting and, and freeing. It'll set you free if you go where the Spirit takes you. And it'll be a wild ride, I promise. Who knows, maybe you can tell me about it one day. Amen. bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of 
stated. In addition to the names on the screen, I'll take names you wish to offer up in prayer. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Abba God, you have brought us into your family, claiming us as beloved children. Bless your family of faith with gifts of cooperation and graciousness. Increase our hospitality toward all expressions of faith and teach us to honor our shared humanity. Merciful God, Your love and power burst forth in the flashes of lightning, the dance of the wind, and the deeply rooted trees of the forest. Sustain fragile and interconnected ecosystems that they flourish for generations to come. God of grace, give your blessing of peace to the nations. Shelter all who risk life and life livelihood to protect others from violence, conflict, and injustice. On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who have lost their lives in war and conflict. God of grace, you are not of God of love and not of condemnation. Quiet the hearts of all who struggle with shame, regret, or questions of self-worth. Teach us to forgive ourselves and one another. Restore wholeness to all who seek hope and healing especially those on our prayer list, the names mentioned aloud and in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Strengthen bonds between parents, children, and families of all varieties. We pray especially for adoptive and foster families, multi-generational households, and blended families. Grant gifts of nurture and patience to all caregivers. God of grace, hear our prayer. The Spirit bears grateful witness to all children of God who have now come into their inheritance among the saints. As they lived with hope in your gift of eternal life, so strengthen us in the faith that we recognize your eternal presence even in this mortal life. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and love of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks. It is indeed right and salutary that we should always, and in all places, offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The banquet is ready. Come and take your place at the feast. I invite you to please be seated until it's your turn to come forward.
stand as you are able and receive the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And we pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, <clears throat> and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is going to be number 566 in your green hymnal, or it'll be up on the screen, and it's My Country Tis of Thee. And before we start singing, I just wanted to point out that I have two Bibles that I have to give away because we have youth here today that were not here last time. So Lucy, I have one for you, and Tanner, I have a Bible for you too. So, And if there's someone else I'm missing, let me know. Okay, I'm done talking now. Mm -hmm. 